is the final part of my Elizabeth project, and you can expect to see the cinematic reveal at Kosi coming up in a few weeks. Now, don't expect to see the final dress at the end of this video. I'm saving it for Kosi, for the premiere at Kosi. I will be working from the Black Snail Patterns 1805 dress, and I've made a few simple modifications to make it more like the V&A dress that inspired this part of the project. I've added longer sleeves, and I've made some of the fabric panels a bit wider to be able to add more gathers. So if you want to see how I did it, keep watching. I got this pattern from the Black Snail Patterns shop on Etsy. It's a super easy pattern to put together. You just buy it, download it, print out the pieces of paper, tape it all together, and then cut out your pattern pieces. I have a longer torso, so I made a few adjustments to the patterns by adding about half an inch to certain areas. Uh, this pattern piece shows around the arm. Then this front panel piece, I added a two inches on every side just to make it a lot bigger to accommodate for more gathers. The top part is gathered with a casing, and the bottom part is gathered with two rows of gathering threads that you just pull taut. Once I had all the pieces cut out, I was able to pin it roughly onto the mannequin just to get an idea of how it would look. The bodice is cut with three side panels, the front bib, then you have two skirt panels and the waistband. I changed out the twill tape for some handwoven tape that I used throughout the dress because I made it to have matching colors. Then I was able to sew all of the pieces to one another and I line it later on. And the back of the skirt has the ubiquitous split that you always see in historical garments. I just did a fold fold hem, so a uh, man to make a stitch. I chose to do French seams on the inside of the skirt, so I, this one is a bit of a mock French seam. I just used the salvage and covered the rough edge, just to not waste any fabric. So once I trimmed down that part, I did the French seam, and it looks really great. Structurally sound, obviously, and then of course you just have the rough salvage edge, but you're not wasting any fabric if you use it like this. I'm using the sleeve pattern from my 18th century Caraco that I mentioned in my Costume 21 Questions video, and it's great because the arm side fits into the pattern piece for the Black Snow Patterns dress, so I could just slip those together. To decorate the sleeve and also the bottom of the skirt, I did some pin tucks just to make it visually a little bit more interesting. I also interlined the sleeve with the same blue fabric, so if I choose to roll up the sleeves, you won't be seeing anything unsightly, unsavory, or otherwise unpleasant to look at. Once I got the lining pieces mostly sewed on, I had to do the rest of the drawstrings. So I just sewed the tape inside, and once that was secured, you can then cover it up and hand sew the rest of the lining to have a nice clean finish. You can see the reinforcing stitch from the outside, but it's so small and close to the back of the dress that you'd really have to scrutinize the garment to be able to find it. Same with the drawstrings in the upper shoulders. I later went in and fixed the placement of it so you don't end up seeing the blue. And then after I hand sewed the rest of the lining down for the waistband and in some other choice areas for the inside of the bodice, just so you don't see any of that stitching from the outside. Here I'm measuring out the pin tucks for the bottom of the skirt. I also did three to match the sleeves and have a bit of a sense of symmetry. And I think visually it adds a lot to the dress because it's otherwise very plain. There's no other trimming to it. It's just all this lovely blue fabric, which I haven't mentioned. It's actually a cotton linen blend. It's really gorgeous to work with, very lightweight. And when you hold it up to the light, it you know the light actually comes through. So. It's really great to wear for a summer dress. I think this is perfect uh, in terms of the weight of the fabric and the breathability of it. 
So after I marked out the middle line, I did marks on the top and marks at the bottom, about three quarters of an inch apart from one another. And then when I sewed it, you just sew right on the marked line by doing a small fold and then you get really easy pin tucks. After sewing in the pin tucks, I went ahead and did the hem. I wanted to keep it big just in case I ever wanted to let it down, so there's lots of extra space there. And the last addition that I did uh, outside of the pattern was adding a hook and eye around the waist tie, just to make sure it's extra secure and when I'm running around and frolicking, it uh, won't come undone. So thanks for watching this three-part series and I hope that you stay to watch the premiere at Kosi.